If you just bought an E90 BMW with an N54 engine and you just installed an aftermarket tune like a JB4 or an MHD, well, your car might be in danger of stranding you on the side of the road. If you wanna know more, stay tuned. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about the ECU or the DME on a BMW, um, particularly the MSD80 version of the ECU, which came on the earlier models, the 2007s. In 2008, they went to the MSD81, and that doesn't really have the problem that I'm about to talk about, but MSD80 has the problem, and it's with the MOSFETs, which are the chips that drive the coils. And this is only really a problem if you have an aftermarket tune on your car and you're starting to generate more power. That aftermarket tune requires more energy, uh, into, more energy to be put into the coils and you just tend to blow those coils or blow the chips, I'm sorry, because of that. Um, there's, this happens a lot. It's a, it's a very common problem. There are two things that you can do to solve it. Number one, if you blow your chips and get stranded on the side of the road, you can open up your ECU and you can just replace the chips. Um, the, the chips are still available. Actually, that's a good question. We have that chip shortage going on. They might not be available anymore, actually. So you kind of really don't want to do this. You know what I'm saying? The second option is much more preferable. It's just to upgrade to an MSD81, which I recently have done on my car. Not this one. It's out in the driveway. Sorry, but you guys know my E90. Um, I recently had Ismail, uh, who's been on the channel before. We've done a couple of videos together. He, you know, he's moved on from keys. He's moved into programming and coding and all that stuff. And he came out and, you know, he installed. What he did essentially is he cloned my existing, uh, this one. He cloned the MSD80 and my CAS module. CAS is the car access system. That's the, um, the anti-theft module, you know? And those two things kind of go together. So what he did is he cloned them and he copied them to an MSD, a used MSD81 and a used CAS module that I had gotten from a junkyard. And he just made a clone for me. So all I had to do was literally swap them over. I pulled my old ones out and swapped the new ones in. And that CAS module, the second one, is programmed with my keys. So it was literally just a plug and play situation. Easy to do that way. He didn't have to do it that way. He could have just pulled out my, my old MSD-80 and then put the new MSD-80, you know, cloned it to the MSD-81 and then hooked up the, my original CAS with that MSD-81. But the thing is, the, the CAS can only be paired with one e, uh, DME at a time. So if you want to do that swap where you're just swapping the ECU, he, he has to do stuff. You know, he has to do the programming or you, I think you can do it. I'm not sure on that, but um, it's, you know, you have to have a, a scan tool in order to do it. So most people, don't want to deal with that whole thing, so it's easier just to get it replaced as a set. Um, another added bonus for me is that, you know, I, I live in California, and California passed a new law back last year in July of 20, 2021. That new law says that if you show up to get your emissions testing and your ECU has an aftermarket tune on it, you automatically fail. So um, it's not the end of the world. You can just go back home and reflash your ECU with your original tune if you have the ability to do that. Um, for me, it's just a little easier to just swap in the old MSD80 and go drive over and get the emissions testing and then come back and swap, swap back in my good one. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna be getting into um, tuning and stuff real soon. Um, I'm getting prepared for it, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to give you guys this info real quick. If you're thinking about tuning or you're on your way and you're in the middle of it, maybe you've installed the JB4 or the MHD and you haven't done any bolt-on stuff yet, or you're still saving up to buy your bolt-on components, whether it's intake or maybe new uh, headers or whatever it is you're gonna do. I'm jealous if you can do headers. I can't do that in California. I gotta keep my cats and all that stuff, so. Oh well. Um, but yeah, just, just take this into consideration. You really, you really don't want to blow your MOSFETs because, like I said, it's probably difficult to get new ones at this point. Plus, desoldering and resoldering, it kind of requires a hot work uh, soldering station, which is, um, it's not a soldering iron. It's actually like a hot air thing. And you kind of, you know, the air kind of blows over the whole MOSFET because, you know, there's multiple contacts on these ships now. So it's a little bit more difficult to do. You need some specialized soldering equipment. And I've seen people mess that up too. So it's probably advised if you're going to go that route, to have them replace is to just find somebody who can do that for you because they know what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? You can send it off and get it back. It should be fine. 
Um, if you want to do what I did and get an MSD81, maybe buy one on eBay or something like that, you can, and you want to get it programmed by Ismail, you can send off your modules to him, and I will put his contact information in the, in the description. He'll mail them back to you and all that stuff. You can get in contact with him and see what he wants to charge for something like that. Anyway, um, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'm the 50s Kid. Thanks a lot for watching.